Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hello and welcome to TV Hangover. I'm Aaron Medley alongside Vicki Hyman. Hey. And we're here with Andrew Zuckerman. Hey, Andrew. Hi, ladies. Andrew is our survivor uh, co-expert along with me, and we'll be talking about that a little later. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds, and at Vicki High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y. Vicki. Yes. Tuesday night, episode two of This Is Us. And I had a monster tweet. I didn't watch it. I was watching Westworld last it's a, night. It's okay. You didn't have to watch <laughs> okay. it. Um, basically, I summarized This Is Us. So because, okay, so I'm watching. Do you watching, still like it? Okay, I do like it. But as I was watching it, I was like, what is the plot? Like, what is the story? Like, I don't Like, where are we going? And then it hit me. Mm-hmm. Like there really is no plot. There, like the story is just like you see these people, these people's lives and what they're going through, and that's it. Like, yeah, like it's, it. It reminds me of a show from like the eighties or like the Wonder Years without the voiceover. Or how about Thirty Something? Or their or Parenthood? Or Parenthood? Exactly. They're Absolutely. calling it the next Parenthood. I'm older, so I was calling it. 30 something that we've right. always wanted. Yes. I still like it. I'm in. Mm-hmm. Are you going to watch? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm going to okay. watch it. I just had I had I had to watch Quantico. I had to catch up on Quantico, oh, which we're talking about wow. later. I and mean. I watched two more episodes of Westworld. There's only so much TV I could watch in an evening. The, the, well, that's untrue. Um <laughs> that is untrue. <laughs> I think that I was out last night until like nine o'clock and then I got home and I was like, let me see what I can watch. And this is us was one of those shows. Oh, and yesterday I also watched um the episode of Conviction. Oh, and, and yeah. remember, I emailed you afterwards you saying did. you are right. It is oh, actually a very solid show. I told you it was I good. Was, I was not feeling it going into it. And um, I'm not going to watch it going forward, <laughs> but um, it, it's very solid. But it's no Notorious. It's Oh, my God. It's so much better than Notorious. Um, it's not trying so hard to be sexy, and yet it right. is sexy. It is sexy. And I like the whole, like, gang atmosphere. Like, we're mm-hmm. going to do this together. Yeah, I mean, it was it was very um, scandal, gladiators kind of thing. I didn't think the, I don't think that the... The um, characters that surround Haley Atwell's character um, mm-hmm. are as interesting, as immediately interesting as the gladiators were in the beginning. But, right. Yeah. Haley Atwell, who was on um, Agent Carter, yes. which was canceled. But, I mean, obviously ABC likes her because yes. she's on the show. All right. So we're supposed to talk about some TV news. I don't have any. Do you? No, we could just go right to premiere ratings. Okay, premiere <laughs> ratings. Uh, in, in usual fashion, uh, Aaron did not premiere pr- prepare for this podcast, um, but I found some ratings real quick. The beauty of having a computer. Okay, so last week was the big premiere week. Um, CBS had its uh, bull premiere. Bless you, Vicky. Whatever's happening I didn't over do here. It. <laughs> I didn't do it. That's, that's how I, I saved you. Okay, so Kevin can wait. <laughs> I need you to guess how many total oh, viewers. Um, seven million. Andrew? Kevin can wait. It's the Kevin James show on CBS comedy. Very King of Queens. 7.1 million. Oh, oh we're I doing prices that. right <laughs> rules. 11.1. 11. 11. Oh, my God. Million oh viewers. God. And, and to make it even worse, Bull, 15.56. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, come on. I but, Come on. I mean, uh, who... Again, who's, watching who's watching TV this? live on people over the age of 40 and mm. people over the age of 50 or 60 maybe are the people who really like Paul. That's so, true. Not that surprising. Well, here's one. Here's one. Another CVS. I haven't watched it yet. MacGyver. Oh, I hated it. Came on Friday night after Hawaii Five O. And it did really well, right? Which I love. I love Hawaii Five O, not MacGyver. Uh, ratings, 10.73 it was so bad. million. Did you watch it, Andrew? Nope. Uh, do you even know what MacGyver is? Are you too, are you too young? No, I, no, I, no, 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 no. I'm not even going to let um, Andrew speak here because I recall distinctly maybe two years ago where we were talking about MacGyver and Andrew had no idea what MacGyver was at all. Like not even the 80s. Like Not nothing. even like via McGruber? 
The only way that I know it exists is because, A, it was a competition in Big Brother this summer, <laughs> and, B, there are commercials every Sunday on CBS during NFL games for it. This should be the nail in Andrew's coffin for being on this podcast, not knowing what MacGyver No, I want is. him on the podcast because then I don't have to watch Survivor. So. <laughs> Well, you're um, not going to By watch the way, anything. Survivor, ter- I mean, uh, I'm sorry, MacGyver, just really terrible. Well, I, I mean, are you surprised? Yeah, I am surprised because, you know, CBS has, like, you know, it can do, like, workmanlike shows. Um, you know, I didn't even think it was as bad as, I, I didn't think Bull was as bad as MacGyver. I mean, if you're going to build a show around a guy named MacGyver, MacGyver should have, like, spark. And, you know, he should be interesting. You should be rooting for him. And he was just such a limp piece of lettuce, this guy at the center of the show. Did you see that they are doing a reboot, or not a reboot, but a new show based on Tom Selleck? What was the show? Oh, Magnum P.I. Magnum P.I.'s daughter. daughter. <laughs> and when, just when you think that was, like, the most ridiculous part of that story, produced by Eva Longoria. What is oh happening? God. What is happening? Um, all right, so I'm trying to get some other ratings here. So This Is Us was the highest rated new series premiere among 18 to 49-year-olds. Can I ask you a question about that, actually? Sure. What? So I didn't hear about This Is Us before it came on, but then I heard about it after the fact. It got, like, extremely praised throughout, you know, Twitter and mm-hmm. critics, like, once it aired. So how was it? Do the ratings reflect that Well, at actually, all? no. I can tell you, um, for some reason, um, the trailer of This Is Us hit um, – hit some sort of sweet spot when it was announced back in May and it was one of the most I think the most widely watched trailer of the entire new TV season it like broke records like 17 million views in three days or something so I think a lot of people were really aware of this one and looking forward to it yeah, I, it, the fact that you um, didn't see any commercials for it yeah. before it aired you don't watch is NBC. really <laughs> insane. Really. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, because people were definitely talking about it before it premiered. And after it premiered, uh, more people were talking mm-hmm. about it. Um, that's a news item. It was picked up for a full season order mm-hmm. um, after the first episode. So that's good news there. You know what returned last week that I didn't realize? What? Law and Order SVU. Yeah, well. You know I still watch. Do you? Of course. Yeah. So now I'm going to have to go on demand it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the um, the Fox News was um, expected. Um, that Rosewood did really, really terrible. I don't think it got a million views um, without the Empire lead-in that it had last year. Even though, you know, I love mm. Misa Morris Chestnut. That is cute. Um, and Pitch did not do very well either, which, you know, we expect it, <sighs> but still makes me sad. It is It is a little disappointing. Now, we were, before we started recording, uh, talking about Designated Survivor, premiered to 10 million viewers okay, on Wednesday good. night. That's not terrible. And, no, that's good. And I think it increased on its lead-in, which was um, Blackish. I think that whole Wednesday night ABC thing is very bizarre because it starts with the Goldbergs, then Speechless, Modern Family, B- Blackish, and then Designated Survivor. Survivor. Well, didn't West Wing um, in its day top like uh, uh, come on after like four comedies? I can't remember. Uh, was, Thursday it, was it on Thursday night? nights? I don't Might know. Was it? I don't think it's. I don't think it's unprecedented. Yeah, that's true. But maybe they're gonna. Um, turn Designated Survivor into a family action drama. <laughs> I hope not. And that's how I that's... I the sun on that show already <laughs> after one episode. <laughs> and that's how it was going to go. Um, Notorious was panned by critics oh. and it opened really low with a 1.1 rating in the 18-49 to 49 demo, which is not good for ABC considering I'm, that's the demo they were targeting mm-hmm. with that well, show. Well, I mean, maybe they will move Conviction into that slot because they were deciding between putting Notorious or Conviction in the scandal slot. Mm. And maybe they will cancel Notorious very quickly. <laughs> Although, as you recall conviction. from last season, they were taking a while to cancel last year. There were no, like, that's you true. know, right off the bat cancellations. Now, Conviction is a Monday night show. Yes. That's not a good night for it. I think they're trying to replace Castle. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, Castle, because that was an ABC Monday Night at 10 show. I think that Conviction would have been a better replacement for Scandal, and Notorious would have been a better replacement for Castle. I don't think Notorious would have been a better replacement for anything. But you never watch Castle. No, I never watch so Castle. So it's, you know, on par. <laughs> really? No. no Castle, it's had, not. Castle is Castle Nathan is Villian. Much better. I know, Nathan Villian's awesome. All right, so that, those are our premiere week ratings. Um, Vicky and I will keep you guys abreast of any major changes or first cancellations. Uh, let's get into our Survivor talk. So last week, uh, we aired our interview with Will Wall, the youngest Survivor contestant ever from New Jersey. Uh, 
I right off the bat said I think he's gonna get the villain edit or he's actually making himself the villain he's definitely not a hero uh, and we saw I thought Andrew a good chunk of him in the in the season premiere he was in a few confessionals well but here's the thing did we see a good chunk of him because he was entertaining or did stuff or because they had to hype up the millennials versus Gen X theme and he was the youngest one there Mm, maybe, maybe. I do think that um, there were only a few of the contestants that they highlighted. I agree. Right? They, they, they seemed as a whole pretty unmemorable after week one. <laughs> like all of them. Yeah. I, I completely agree. So Will in play, was he like annoying millennial? There was no play. Let's okay. be clear about, so this season of Survivor was millennials versus Gen X. Their number one task on day one is always to build the shelter. And you can tell that the Survivor producers and editors are having a great time with this Millennials versus Gen X thing. The way they played it out was the Millennials would rather go swimming in the ocean as the cyclone approached instead of building their shelter, whereas the Gen Xers were like, we got to get this shelter up. I mean, honestly, neither one got the shelter up. And I think, I think there's two problems with this. Yeah. One is that we've kind of already seen it before. Season 21, Nicaragua, Young vs. Old, they've done it before, and it was a huge failure. They had to stop it basically halfway through and do a quick uh, uh, swap because of it. The younger tribe dominated every challenge. Uh, The older tribe had no shot. I feel like this is just rebranded as Millennials vs. Gen X, even though there is a little, you know, the 35 to 40 year old Right, like the the Gen Xers are, but the Gen Xers are not, they're just not that old. Like, realistically, they aren't old. They're, it's not like they have uh, Gen Xers who are 45 plus. I think, yeah, what is the oldest age? I think there was one guy that was 60. No, 60, yeah. he can't be a I Gen think, Xer. I, he would be a baby boomer. No, I think, they descri- I think they described it as like 35 to 60 was Gen X. No. That is, <laughs> I don't know. It has to be impo- cool. That's Let's impossible. That's impossible. I think the youngest, the youngest baby boomer right now, because my husband and I have this argument all the time because I tell him he's a baby boomer. Yeah. Um, I think they say it's like 1960 is the cutoff, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that would make the, oh, 56. Yeah. So maybe. But not 60. Was it 50? I don't know. I look. We. I think this is something that we have to. Andrew, you, you tell us what yeah. you think so, so far. So of then, the, the, well, the second second thing I have with this is when the producers design a theme like this, and you know, we see it with brains versus beauty versus brawn as well. When they specifically start out the season with millennial versus Gen X, and they put these people on these tribes, the contestant, the castaways, kind of feel like it seems like they feel like they have to play to that role. So of course we're going to see them, you know, lazying around, not building a shelter. You know, they're they're going to design and edit the season to be that way. We only see 43 minutes of, you know, 72 hours uh, every episode. So uh, of course it's going to be designed that way. So I kind of feel like it's not it's not true Survivor, at least in the first week and a half, uh, first you know, week and a half of them being there, mm-hmm. that the editors are telling this millennial versus Gen X story, not a Survivor story. Oh, completely agree. Um, I don't know why Survivor thinks they need these gimmicks. Like, it really doesn't. Right. Just play the game. And let's be real. A, a terrible season of Survivor is still going to be great to us. We're still going to watch. Course. We're still going to love it. But it's just, it doesn't feel like right away that it's true survivor right it's gonna take a few weeks or at least until after the merge um the oldest survivor contestant this season is 52 oh okay so they would be a gen xer correct definitely a gen xer um but again 52 is not that old seeing as how on survivor we've had contestants who are in their 70s right. so they're both pretty young tribes they're it's just that the gen xers made the, a dumb decision um during the challenge and i think that's what we're going to see moving forward is that they're going to keep throwing these monkey wrenches in where they're going to have to make a decision and like whose decision is going to be more millennial whose decision is going to be more gen x right and and let's say the tribes were just you know for for this sake orange versus yellow and and or orange was purple. If you weren't labeled Gen X, would they have taken the short, or not taken the shortcut, or taken the shortcut? Do they feel like they have to do one thing a certain way because they are in that label? I don't of know Gen if X? they feel like they have to. I think that they have, and it just plays into it. Like in the beginning of the episode, and let's ask Vicky what she would do. They had to As choose. A Gen Xer? Correct. They had to choose, but and I want to know what Andrew thinks. You, if you had to choose between. A couple of chickens, you're on Survivor, a couple of chickens, live, live chickens, chickens, or fishing gear, which one would you choose? Um, 
I guess I would choose the chickens. Andrew? I would also choose the chickens. And I would also choose the chickens. <laughs> I mean, and the, it's like a chicken in the hand is worth two fish in the bush, right? So the the Gen Xers, is that is that what it is? That's exactly I it. I don't know if that's it. But the Gen Xers <laughs> chose the fishing gear and the millennials chose the chickens. And the Gen Xers were like, well, you only have uh, the chickens until you eat them. And the millennials are like... They lay eggs. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Not to mention, in Survivor, there are tribe tribe swaps. There are merges. Everything changes. So right. take the short ter- short short term food if you can. Chickens aren't even short term food. <laughs> but they can. I mean, they you a chicken can lay an egg and right. it not be like. But you, if you get three chickens, what? you can eat two and keep one to lay the eggs. If you get three chickens, just have them lay the egg. Like, it's protein. I don't even understand why this is a conversation. Like, the fish, you actually have to, like, go out into the water where, by the way, cyclone's coming, and catch freaking fish. The chickens, you just let them do their thing. You're going to have eggs, like, I mean, every day. look how day. long it took Tom Hanks to get a fish and cast away. By the Thank time you. he got his first fish, he had that big, long beard. See? And Vicky is a Gen Xer, so I just think that was a dumb decision by the Gen Xers. But, you know, it'll be interesting. Every season of Survivor, in the beginning, it's super boring. Then in the middle, it heats up. And then at the end, it's super boring (laughs) again. Right. So we'll have to see how it goes. Um, I'm going to be keeping my eye on Will. I think he can go far. I like Zeke. I like Zeke. Which one is that? uh, He's on the millennial tribe, but he is not very millennial. He's the one that said... um, you know, all these kids are tweeting, of course I'm on Twitter and I love it, but why do they always have to do it? He's the guy that dressed in the flowery Is shirt. He one of the freaks and geeks? Oh, I know who you're talking yeah. about, the guy with the mustache? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He's, he's, he's special. Yeah. He's one of the few characters that showed his character he's in the first He's certainly episode. a character. <laughs> certainly. Um, so, Zuckerman, will you be back to talk Survivor with us uh, when we call you? Sure. Will you please do some research on MacGyver? No. <laughs> oh, well. Well, guess what? There are episodes available on Hulu. I found that out last week. So if you want to catch up. I'm just glad you guys didn't spoil Parenthood because I'm on the final season, actually, during a binge watch. Are so there, when you were talking I about mean, it earlier, I was about to like, cover my ears. one spoiler in Parenthood that we will not spoil for you, and it's like in the very last episode. Well, then don't say it. We're not going to say <laughs> it. But otherwise, Parenthood's not like a spoiler-heavy show. It's, it's but not. when you've been binge-watching something for a couple months, you don't want to be spoiled. And you can pretty spoiled. much figure out what yeah, the spoiler like, is. <laughs> when you get to like maybe the penultimate episode or like a couple before that, you'll know what the, the spoiler is. All right. That's all we're saying. All right. Um, you can, you're can. you more than happy to, to stay for the rest of the podcast. We're talking about Real Housewives We're going to talk about some Real Housewives He's drama. running. He's running. I think I'll leave that to you, too. Okay. <laughs> well, we're the experts on that. So, Vicki, this week on Real Housewives, we were introduced to our two housewives that never were. The Lost Housewives. The lost. I'm calling them the Lost Housewives. Robin. Robin Levy and Christina Flores. They're married. They're married. Um, And you actually spoke with Robin this I week. I did. I spoke to her yesterday. Okay. And, like, a as soon as the episode was over, I DM'd her, and I'm like, um, can we talk? <laughs> um, and I can't even say that we were introduced to them because they were just, like, thrust Thrown upon in. us. Yeah. Um, I, it was, I thought it was probably one of the worst episodes of Real Housewives it ever. It was the worst edited episode. Yes, yes. Um, so, the, so they're on their way to Vermont. Uh, these two women, Chris... Um, Chris, Joe Gorga's Jacqueline, there, Joe Gorga, and everyone Melissa, else. Teresa, not Joe Giudice, who's Oh, mom. right. He can't leave the state. <laughs> nope. Um, and so they're on this trip to Vermont. And we actually had a little bit of a disagreement on um, on how we, like, so. On whether Jacqueline on whether is Jacqueline, nuts or not? <laughs> yes, because I still maintain she's not nuts. Um, well, I think I, I she's ha- misunderstood. I, I, well, I happen to say that I think she isn't. I, I she's probably not nuts, but I think that she knows that she has to play nuts. Yeah, but I still don't even think she's playing nuts. So while they're on the the bus, um, Jacqueline and Siggy both bring up the fact that Rosie and Kathy, you know, think that the door is still open. Like there could possibly be a and relationship. And why do they think that? Because, because Teresa, Teresa said, said so. my door is always open. However, Teresa is like, I have closed the door to Joe and everybody else. He had, yes. She said that to Joe and everyone else. I've closed the door. I don't want them in my life. There's, It's too much drama. You know, everything's fine, but I don't want to be mm-hmm. 
you know, have a relationship with them. And Jacqueline and Siggy simply tried to say, like, well, that is not how they feel. And it turned into this whole argument on the bus. And then Robin got into the middle of it um, because apparently she has some relationship with uh, Rosie, separately. Rosie separately. And I just felt it was a com- it was one of those classic housewives moments where there was a misunderstanding um, and that no one was hearing what the other person was saying, and that's why voices because were one of them elevated. is Jacqueline and one of them is Teresa. That is so correct. They just there's just they're yes. like basically White soundproof noise. booths all the time <laughs> crazy with town. each other. Yeah. Until so Chris finally like everybody got calmed down, and Chris Larita, because he's a man, he right. can he can mansplain. Of course, <laughs> mansplain the whole situation. Yes. Um. So that was our first bit of drama, and then once they got to Vermont, they're sitting out by the fire pit making s'mores. By the way, love s'mores, mm-hmm. and all hell breaks loose. But the most confusing hell ever. Yeah, I, 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 it's really hard to recap. Well, um, but you know, let's take a listen because I oh, think okay, it'll please. be easier. You can see how hard my job is. Yes. <laughs> so all that time you girls were bitching. That whole time. No, oh, I was making one marshmallow. That's the kind of friend that I am. Wait, I did what I, I did. Hold on a minute because know that I think that you're a really good person. Just, Watch this. just, just you without you explaining person, one thing. Multiply that by a thousand. And that's this person right here. Like, what is that? That was random. Okay, okay. We, you don't feel it? Jacqueline and I. (laughs) Hold on, now I want to answer. What do you think of me? You confuse the living (laughs) out of me. I don't think you're very direct with a lot of things. I'm not direct. How indirect is that statement? You prejudged me in a way that you felt an opportunity to, to attack me. Like, no, wait, when you're saying I'm not direct, you would have rather me said, Nothing. I don't like you because you're no, trying to... I don't think that either one of you should be judging either one of you. That's the wife. My initial thing with you was oh, you're playing the loyal soldier. Patterson's out there. I'm not worried about it. Ooh, ooh, is that? I make my own decision. Patterson's I don't need there. you who doesn't know me and who shouldn't judge me to call me a f***ing And what were you calling me before you knew me? Can you get Teresa, please? I don't why? understand why it's so important for Robin to bring Teresa in on my argument. You can't handle this on your own? Why are you calling for backup? They're going at it, guys. I don't know. Really? About what? Oh, they're going at it. I'm not soldier to Teresa. I feel Back like you one kind thing, of are a little bit. F- making me mad now. What is your problem? By you f-ing calling me a soldier makes me want to rage on your f-ing ass. <laughs> Do it! Do it! What the f- Okay, so Vicky, summarize for me. What was that fight about? Okay, can I can I give some background? No, no, <laughs> at, no. Just summarize for me as so. Pretend you don't have this insider knowledge. What was that well, fight about? The, the point is, it's, I'm not even going to give the background on that. I'm just. I I don't really know what the fight is about, other than. Robin and Jacqueline apparently have some bad blood between them. And my issue is that we don't know that because we haven't seen Robin and Christina all the way throughout the season. Right. Because I have to say this. Okay, so when I talked to Robin yesterday, you know, she had been talked about um, leading up to the show as being one of the new housewives along with Siggy and Dolores. Um, And so I knew there were these four women sort of in the wings. And then Bravo announced that Melissa, Jacqueline, and Teresa were coming back. And then when the show was... Then the season seven, they're like, okay, this is this going to be the show. They introduced Siggy and Dolores. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, what happened to Robin and, and, and Christine? I guess they didn't make the cut. Whatever. Right. And the thing is that they were there the entire time. And if you know what they look like, which I did... You could see them in all sorts of in in all sorts and of Bravo gatherings. And Bravo shows that in this episode, yeah. yeah. And, and and it's like, but they never ever introduce them as like people, human beings. You right. never saw any of the drama. There's apparently drama with her and Jacqueline. I really don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it'll come out. Um, and then they just throw these people into the episode. I mean, like at least with Kim D, when she's introduced, oh, they're going to her boutique. This is Kim D. She's kind of right. a loud mouth. You know, but it's like you got to know her a little bit before she was like the the, 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 the the slinger. Let's just put it that way. Right. Um so it was just it was terrible editing if you are a casual to medium serious connoisseur of Real Housewives. If you, I mean, if you really follow Real Housewives, you can sort of I think it was are. bad editing for anyone who watched it. They were oh. just like, what? I don't understand. Um, so, quickly, tell us, uh, give us some scoop from Robin, your conversation. Oh, I don't know. It's scoop I have. Um, she, um, she said that she is disappointed 
I think, by how she was portrayed. Um, <laughs> I mean, aren't they all? Yeah. Well, yes. Yes, okay. I think I think you you could say that. Um, um, she did tell me that, and I, I kind of always sort of knew this, but I never really thought about it, that when they bring the new women on at the beginning of the season um, to tape, not at the beginning, mm-hmm. she says that she and Dolores and Siggy and Christina were all sort of on the same level. Right. And they didn't know maybe one of them would get picked up, maybe two of them would get, maybe all of them would get picked up, mm-hmm. and it turned out it was Siggy and Dolores, and she is, like, fine with that. Right. Um, I mean, look, let's be honest, Dolores hasn't really added much to the season. She, I mean, n- no, not really. Okay. Um, yeah. So... I am curious as to whether this was just a one-off to sort of spark this fight that is brewing between Jacqueline and Melissa. And Melissa, and we're never going to see her me again. Melissa, as she me called Lissa? her on Watch What Happens Live oh, I didn't on Sunday that. night, she called her me Melissa because she's all about herself. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it is um, a very poor, poor choice by Bravo to do this. I, I, I think that the whole season, as we know, has been very problematic, and they were probably like, okay, we got to throw some drama in here, and we're going right. to throw these people in there. And you know, I think they made it worse by with the Rosie and Robin stuff by like going back to two episodes, the book right, signing, and showing some signing. footage we haven't seen before, and just sort of throwing that right. into the you mix. You can't too. make people care about this relationship between Robin and Rosie. Or the relationship between Robin and Jacqueline when we don't even know who the heck Robin is. Yeah. I'm sorry. This this entire season of Real Housewives of New Jersey should be uh, locked away in a vault never to be seen again. <laughs> that might because be Because it's not good, but okay. All right. So moving on from Real Housewives of New Jersey, let's talk about another show that another a lot of people thought ridiculous show. <laughs> should have been locked away <laughs> into a vault, vault. And that is Quantico returned this week. Now, Returned. Mm-hmm. last season, uh, it, w- it was a lot of people very high on it after the, the pilot, which I, I was, was not high on. I was. And then proceeded to drop off. Yes, I think by four million progressed. viewers or something. Yeah. Every single week, except I kept watching. Yes, you did. So I could find out who the bomber was. And if you were to ask me now, Aaron, who was the bomber? I'd be like, I don't remember. Oh, wait, was it Liam? It was Liam. Yes, okay, yes. I remember. Josh Ooh, Hopkins. Right. Josh right. Hopkins? Just Josh Hopkins. Yeah. Yes. Um, so now Quantico is back. Uh, Vicky watched the uh, the premiere, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Tell me. Did you like it? Did you not like it? I didn't hate it. How's that? Um, okay. I didn't really see it improving on all the... Well, I, it did improve in a sense of what I didn't like about the first season, which was, like, there was a ridiculous amount of bed hopping. It was, again, like, well, very... Well, it's only the first episode. Well, I know, I know. But it's it like time. it seemed like they were just going to be focusing on, um, on uh, Ryan and... Um, Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to know the other people a little bit. Maybe there will be some bed hopping going on. But I was a little relieved that they didn't just immediately go into complete orgy mode. <laughs> um, well, we should tell people that if you're not watching Quantico or if you haven't caught up yet, this season is set at the CIA, mm-hmm. not the FBI. Although, I, I'm not going to look. If Why you not? haven't, Why not spoil it? It's been okay. three days. Spoiler alert. Uh, both Alex and Ryan are now... Uh, at in the CIA training. training program, but they're still working for the FBI. They're and going undercover. They're going because undercover. They think that the um, head training guy, Blair Underwood, Bear, Blair Underwood, hottie, Aaron's favorite, hottie. Um, they think that he is um, recruiting people for some secret. Um, I don't even know what, like black ops anti CIA where group. they don't have to like where I guess they could torture people and right. whatever whatever means necessary to do whatever means they right. want to do very it was a little die hardy and I felt um, <laughs> um, in the oh, so, so uh, one of my big issues with this and I think it was actually worse was that there were a lot I mean I love the dual structure I like the flash forward the flashback whatever mm-hmm. but there was way too much in this one episode in that you one episode back and forth there were tons forth, back and, and forth and what's funny about it is I think that it's it in the previous season and maybe this is just me and I'm a weirdo but in in the first season I felt like there were flashbacks whereas in this season there're flash forwards like the the time that we're in the present is the past and that the future it, we're flashing forward whereas last season I felt like the time we were in was the is that present because the bulk of the, you the felt pre- the bulk of the season was it I mean, I don't like, what know. is the real difference there was just something weird I I don't so there was something off-putting to me about the flashes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that a little confusing at the same time. Well, this is super confusing. Yeah. Um, I mean, they did have Priyanka Chopra wearing what I don't think is a very good wig in the flash forwards to, like, sort of, like... The straight wig. The straight wig with the no bangs yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, we can talk about wigs. Um, <laughs> I think we already talked so about yeah, that. I, th- I think it was too flashy. Basically. It was too flashy. Um, but there were some interesting characters. Um, you know, I don't know very much about Blair Underwood yet, but we did intru- we'd introduce Lydia, who is um, a fellow recruit, who it turns out, we're going to spoil you again, is actually an instructor in the CIA, right. which I thought was a nice little twist. But that was the same twist they had in season one with Ryan, remember? We thought he, Ryan was a recruit, and then he turned out to be, a, he was already an Asian, remember? He was, he was. Um, but this woman is your, I, I don't know, I just, I, I appreciate that, because I didn't see that one coming. And you okay. can usually see a lot of things coming on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep watching it or not. I mean, the fact is, um, you fast forward, and it's a sort of, not exactly a terrorist attack, more like a terrorist hostage situation, mm-hmm. which ended like, I was With really surprised. With slaughtering the president's yeah, I mean, wife. You didn't, you didn't see them de- decapitating her on television, but, you know, that's what, it, I, I can't imagine them stopping the blade no. from where it was. So yeah. that was kind of horrifying, and I was really shocked they went there. They did go um, there. But, you know, interesting. It just feels kind of like a retread of the first season. I mean, it's how they, how they, um, how they structure these episodes is very specific where, you know, each episode has to do with like a certain way, a certain thing they have to learn. Mm -hmm. And then that is carried through to the flash forward. So you sort of have like not only the plot line in both things, but also like this is what this episode is all about. It's all about lying. You have to see people lie. And it's like, it's, it's a lot. I um I think it's interesting the way that they they've incorporated the characters from last year. Some of them are in the present, some of them. present, not president. Some of them are in the future. Um, but it really seems like they're going to focus more on these CIA recruits. Mm-hmm. And I think there will come a point where there's just there will be too many people and too many stories to tell, mm-hmm. which I think was part of the problem yes. with season one. Yes, um, Along so with the bed hopping. No, there will be tons of bed hopping because did you hear that part in in the premiere where the woman who turned out to be an instructor says like there are no rules or Ryan said there are no rules like the FBI Mm -hmm. here, which basically means you can sleep with and have relationships with whomever you want and no one cares. Yes. There will be lots of bed hopping. Well, also, in, in going back into my that's so unrealistic mode, um, so they managed, uh, so Ryan and Alex managed to leave the farm, the CIA Academy, and hide out and meet with people in some abandoned house nearby, which I just think is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, but they work for the FBI, so I'm sure the, the and they're, they're working they with a, the FBI and the but CIA. But they're, training, they're tra- training at the CIA Academy. I know, but the guy, the other guy who's with Miranda works for the CIA, so I'm sure if they need to get out, he can make that happen. It's ridiculous. Well, the whole show's ridiculous. Yes. Remember that scene where the bomb blew up in the warehouse, but the girl didn't die, whatever her name was? Or no, mm. she did die. No, I don't know. No, Alex didn't die. She <laughs> ran out right before the bomb exploded. Whatever. Without anyway. a hair out of place. Without a hair out of place. I will be watching the entire season uh, because it's God hard for me you, <laughs> to give up on really terrible shows. Um, I might, I may actually watch the entire season season of Notorious. No, I know. Why would you do that? Why not? Why? Why not? Why? Not you, you, okay. You just need you need another outlet. Play more volleyball. I don't know. There's no excuse for it. There won't be an entire season of a tour. It doesn't matter. I would only be like the first five episodes before it's canceled. If that okay. Well, a show that I don't think will be canceled is Westworld. Well, it certainly won't be canceled the first season. No, yes, because it's on HBO, and you know how HBO the first season rules. shot already. First season is shot. This is a show that has had a lot of problems uh, making it to air, but yes. it's finally premiering on Sunday, October 2nd. Uh, at what, 8 o'clock? 9 o'clock? Mm, no, 9 or 10. Nine, yeah. Um, it stars Anthony Hopkins. Uh, Evan Rachel Wood. Evan Rachel Wood. James Tandy Martin, Newton. Uh, great cast. It has a phenomenal cast, and it's basically about an amusement park uh, where people can go visit. It's like a Western world. Oh. Hence <laughs> really? the name <laughs> Westworld. Westworld. <laughs> um, and but the the park, the amusement park, is populated by robots. Mm-hmm. I think we've talked about this before, so you guys should know what. Well, it I is. talked about it last week as yeah. one of my, if not my favorite one, at least the one I was most intrigued by. Yes, and so, I've seen seen two more episodes, and I've seen two episodes, and we will discuss. But first, let's take a listen to the trailer. You came back. You know, if I could stay right here with you, I would. Just sometimes I feel like the world out there is calling me. You know, one of them aren't you. You're not real. Bring yourself back online. <laughs> Do you know where you are? I'm in a dream. You're in my dream. I designed every part of this place. 
not a theme park, but an entire world. You and everyone you know were built to gratify the desires of the people who pay to visit your world. Just don't forget, they're not real. What you and I do is so complicated. I need your help, Dolores. I think I made a mistake. So our creatures have been misbehaving. I think there may be something wrong with this world. No choice you ever made was your own. You have always been a prisoner. What if I told you I'm here to set you free? Are we very old friends? No. I wouldn't say friends, Dolores. I wouldn't say that at all. Ooh. All right, so <laughs> you hear a lot of different characters there. Uh, in the premiere, we're going to try to remain as spoiler-free as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but in the premiere, you see that some of the robots realize that there's something off. And, you know, the people who are running Westworld, uh, who are b b below... Is that what you said? Yeah, they're Rumble. underneath. They're underneath, underneath the this theme park. western landscape. Um, they they say, "Oh, it's due to an update to the robots." You know, mm -hmm. this is what happened. You know, it's no big deal. Like, don't worry about it. And then as the show progresses, you see that well, it's kind of a big deal because a lot of the robots are like waking up mm -hmm. um, and realizing that something's not right in Westworld. Um, that's like one half of the storytelling. The other half of the storytelling is about the people who visit Westworld. Mm -hmm. um, so we see James Woods' character. That's James Woods, right? No, James Marston? No. Which, who are we talking Who's about? Who's the bad guy? The oh, Ed Harris? Oh, my God. Thank you. Like <laughs> oh, not James Woods. Ed, Ed Harris. Yes. Ed, Ten of Fly Native, Ed Harris. Ed Harris. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Um, is a man who vi who's been visiting Westworld for 30 years. Um and he is, like, the bad guy in every Western. He goes around, like, killing everyone. He is the character. He seems to be playing that character. He seems to be, yes, he seems to be playing that character. But that's what I think is most fascinating about this show, is that these people go to Westworld to live out their fantasies, and their fantasies involve murdering other people, raping women, and having copious Not amounts Not necessarily. Of and there's a really interesting part in what? the second episode, which sometimes I think actually should have been the first episode, mm -hmm. where we follow a new guy who wasn't in the first episode. Yeah. Um, um, sort of like we experience what it's like to, you know, enter this world. And one of the choices he has to make is he's going to be a black hat or a white hat. Right. And uh, most people seem to be picking the black hats. Correct. But some people pick the white hats. Some people do pick the white hats, but I'd say and overwhelmingly does, most people are picking the black I mean, hats. Yeah, I mean, like... There have been a lot of AI movies recently, and I actually do not find the whole concept of, you know, you know, uh, consciousness as as kind of interesting as the actual human characters. I agree. Um, although I am, what, what I really did like about, and I'm still on the fence about this show after watching three episodes, mm -hmm. um, I do love world building. I love learning rules of the universe, and the way they're doling out, I really like it. It's very effective. The third episode is actually also very good when it comes to that. You get a little bit more backstory on some of the characters. Um, um, the real people characters or the robot characters? The real people characters. Okay. Um, you know, the, the one issue I have with the show, and one of the reasons why I do not think it is going to be the next Game of Thrones... Oh, not even close. Yeah, but, yes, but people continue. are saying that. People no. are saying, this is going to be it. And I'm like, Negative. I really don't think so. Uh -uh. Um, is that it is so cerebral, and it's very talky, but all the dialogue is freighted with significance, and you have to listen to... I mean, like, yes, you should be listening to everything, but right. it's like every single bit of dialogue sends your mind on a... Like, what do they mean by this? What do they mean right. by that? And it's like, it's really hard to keep up with the show when you're wondering about every single thing everybody says. So here's the thing. You know how I watch TV. This is how I'm able to watch so much of it. Um, I'm always doing, like, many things you at once. Do I'm multitasking. This. I think I can, though, because I've watched the first two episodes. Yes, granted, it's, it's taken me, like, 
like six hours uh, <laughs> to watch an hour, two hours of TV. Um, but I wasn't paying that close attention. The only time when I felt like I really needed to and I wasn't was when Anthony Hopkins' character was speaking because he's like the mastermind behind Westworld. And I think everything that he says is vitally important to understanding the overall story and like what's happening. Um, and I won't say what happened, like what happens in, in the second episode, but he has a conversation with mm-hmm. another person in Westworld. <laughs> Um, and I feel like that's very significant, and I probably should rewatch that. Um, and then also, who's the um, guy who works behind the scenes? The African American guy, Jeffrey Wright. Yes, Jeffrey Wright. Um, kind of his character. Yes, I think what his character says is also very important. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that it's one of those shows where if you overthink it too much, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on the fun of it. I don't know how much fun there was. <laughs> I mean, quite I, frankly. I really enjoyed when the one guy, he shot the bad guy robot, and then they took photos. He's like, this is the best okay. vacation ever. I, I think maybe there could be more moments like that. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I was kind of exhausted after watching two episodes in a row. And I remember at one point, I'm just like sitting there, like flopping back and going, like, oh my god, let yeah. this be over. Which is not a good sign. Uh, it's not I guess. a good sign. But, you know, know, but I mean, it's like, it's not meant to be watched, you know, because there's a like, lot you're not supposed to, to think binge about. It. It's, it's kind of like the way I felt about Bloodline. Like, there was a, the first mm-hmm. season, there was, like, a lot going on, a lot to think about, and it, I don't really think that it was a bingey kind of show. It's a show that you have to think about. Right. Whereas, like, Game of Thrones, it's like, you just can't, you just have to see what happens next. Right. And the interesting thing about the show is that there's a lot of repetition in the show, because every day, the whole amusement park resets itself, so you see the same... Uh, you know, even when the guests aren't around, the host, the robots, right. um, have their own backstories that the guests feed into. This is very, you know, very large, sprawling narrative. Right. Um, and so they replay the same scenes over and over again with some things are different. Sometimes they rem- they seem to remember things. Sometimes they're actually played by different people. Right. They can pull people in and put them into different roles. Robots in. Pull robots in yes. and put them into different roles. Yes. Um. I find the whole thing fascinating. I'm really into it, and I can't wait to watch more episodes. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. I'm in. Okay. Um, another show that's premiering on HBO. On this, October 9th. Oh, October 9th yes, is later. Divorce with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and who's Oh, Thomas lead? Hayden Church. Because oh. you have to have three names to be on the show. <laughs> SJP and THC, which yes. is a drug. Is it not? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, so the show Divorce uh, is premiering on HBO, and Vicky watched the uh, pilot. And I actually watched the first three episodes. Oh, Vicky watched the first three episodes. I watched the first ten minutes of the first episode, <laughs> and I was out. <laughs> and you know what? Ten minutes might be generous. Why were you Maybe. out? I, what the hell is the show about? It's a, it's, it is a... I, I, I was going to say a dark comedy. I don't even think it's, it's a comedy. Funny. And like the thing, it, like Now, Molly <laughs> Shannon does pop up in the premiere. She does. I mean, there are funny, funny moments, but I would not call it a comedy. I, I mean, it's it's kind of a dramedy, um, but with a lot of very, very bitter humor. I mean, like, Sarah Jessica Parker is not, it's, this is not Sex in the City after she gets married to Mr. Big and, you know, whatever. This is not what happens. It's mm-hmm. a different character. But, but one of the things I wanted to discuss with you and I thought was extremely distracting about this is that even though she's not playing Carrie Bradshaw, not only is the fact that she was such an iconic character hard to get past, but she does nothing for the viewer to take you past that because her mannerisms, her tone of voice, everything about her is just screams Carrie, even right. though it's, you know, she's in a diff- it's, different it's show. It's really, really distracting. And it was, I, I felt like I wanted to see a different actress so, in there. So you couldn't see past the cariness of her character. Well, it's like every single time she like, you know, would say something in a certain way or make a make a gesture. Like she this is one gesture that was like, "Oh my god," where she took both of her hands and pressed them to her chest and her elbows were forward. It's like, "I have seen Carrie do that like 17 times. Right. Just don't do that." So do you okay? think that negatively impacted the way you feel about yes. the show? Yes. So are, are you recommending the, the show. show or no? Um I, I yes, I, I can recommend the show. I don't think it's for everybody. I do not think it's going to be a big hit. Okay, um, but you know, I think it's certainly worth watching, and it's I think it's it's certainly worth. I mean, I think you know because I know people who have gone through divorce. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's probably fairly accurate. It's going to be painful for them to watch, but it seems very true. Okay, well, it seems very very true. I've never been married or divorced, which is probably why I'm not into it. 
Maybe. It's just not yeah. not my cup of tea. But speaking of other actors or actors who sort of embody, embody their characters, um, their iconic characters, mm-hmm. and then take them to other roles, on my list, and I think I've said this to you before off air, Kyle Chandler. I do not. Kyle Chandler a will of always be Coach Taylor to me, number one. It also doesn't help that he has that accent. And I would like to go back to when he was on. What was that show he was on a long time ago? With oh, the, news, the newspapers? Oh, God. Early edition. Early edition. Oh, my okay. God. Young Kyle I want to go back to early edition days and see if he has that effing accent. Mm-hmm. Because if he doesn't, <laughs> Kyle Chandler is from Buffalo, New York. People in Buffalo don't have a twang. a twang, yet he has the twang on Bloodline. And I get it. They're in Florida. However, it's I, I don't really think South Florida is much of a twang. Thank you. <laughs> but he also carries that with him in his everyday life. So if you watch mm-hmm. the Emmys when he gave his speech, he has the twang. Mm-hmm. So for me, whenever I hear that, it brings me back to Coach Taylor and so Kyle Chandler will always be Coach Taylor for me. I don't care what role he's in. Well, I mean, it's like okay for somebody like Kevin James to basically be playing the same person over Kevin and over James. again because it's the same show over and over again. This is true. But it's a real big problem. And like, like another person I think does this is um, Lauren Graham mm. from Gilmore Girls. She'll always be Laura like Gilmore. And I really felt that her sour Braverman and Parenthood was kind of like a slightly more tormented Laura like Gilmore. Right. The show wasn't that different from Gilmore Girls. And the problem with divorce is that it is very different from Sex, Sex and the City. Yeah. Very different. So, look, if you're into this kind of thing, if you're a big fan of Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, check out Divorce. If you're a big fan of Carrie Bradshaw, even more so check yeah. out Divorce. <laughs> um, Vicky and I, uh, well, Vicky will be watching. I will not. I'll be watching Westworld and Quantico and Notorious because and you know. conviction you, oh my god totally yes conviction. that's right totally into conviction i will be watching speechless and this is us i watched speechless yes did you like it i did like it it's really good. i thought it was funny um and blackish because david diggs is on tonight oh is he yes I'm very okay excited. well then we'll definitely be checking out blackish um i know we don't have much time but i do want to quickly get your feedback on the season premiere of modern family did you see it i didn't see it i'm sorry okay so it's I, on my dvr i know you're a huge modern family fan as am i did not think it was a strong mm. episode. I think we're getting to the point where they're retreading and it's not as funny and I'm so sad. Do you think that the cancellation bear is coming for them? I think they have one more season and then it's After over. this one? After this one, mm. one more season and then it's done. Yeah, I mean, it's like, are they going to add another baby at some point? Because that is really the death knell. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Maybe they already added Joe. Yes, and Joe, yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore Meds, and at Vicky High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y. We will not be on next week. Aaron's going on vacation. Mm. But we'll be back the week after. 